all three of the talks were very rich in their content. Each of them could have gone on for two hours. We are quite far through the afternoon, but I think let's dig into some points that any of you would like to extend or challenge or ask about for all three of the speakers, in fact. There's a good question at that back here. Yes. Yeah, so I, I agree with psychedelics definitely takes you to like a different state where you can analyze things, but then at the same time it seems a little bit of a kind of shortcut, right? So you can experience or achieve the similar states of mind by meditating, doing certain routines, and kind of working through your body. And as we know, journey is as important as uh, the solution that you find there. So what do you think, do you think that taking psychedelics is a little bit of a shortcut and are you losing any anything in the journey if you kind of don't go through full experience let's say you know people going and meditating for you know years sometimes mm -hmm. right you, you get something to it as well so i know are so you cheating are you i would love to take that one yeah so if you're a healthy individual who had quite the right childhood and normal school, then yeah, this is a great way. I do respect this way. I tried this way too. But if you were abused, if you had trauma that you cannot connect with and you spend all your life trying to forget that trauma and not have it in your life, then it might not work. Meditation can be really challenging. Meditation and yoga can um, dissociate you and depersonalize you as well. You can re-traumatize yourself through that. Because when you meditate, and especially things like Vipassana, which is uh, like a 10-day meditation without speaking to people, a lot of things come up, and you cannot process it yourself. You don't have anyone to talk to, and you don't have clinician or psych psychiatrist or psychologist to speak about this. So it's very dangerous for some people to go that path. The other thing is, I don't think in this society right now, climate problems and everything, I don't think we have 30 years for everyone to go through the long path. I think we need to really do the shortcut now because we're at the critical point at the moment. Um, so yeah, that's. Done. Can I jump on that? And then I would also say and suggest the idea of it being a shortcut is definitely not that from experience. Um, in my humble opinion and experience, that's when the work actually starts to begin, when you start to interface in these spaces and with these, with the information that you're giving and how to start dealing with it because most time we've been suppressing it. And in fact, the practices that we talk about, like yoga, meditation and so forth, they will actually all come out of the psychedelic experience. They're kind of like trickled down. If you see see what the origins of yoga is, you see it comes out of the psychedelic soma. Or, you know, I'm actually yeah. quite up on the screen. These are things that go hand in hand with psychedelics rather than something that should be seen separate. Yes. Um. What I feel is that, of course, whether you're taking psychedelics or any kind of other medication or meditation, is, of course, it's um, works as self therapy. But then I feel in our society, one of the main problems is detachment from other human beings. And we not talk enough about the healing through others, or in the sense that, you know, there is even like we see how. You look at other person, stranger eyes for 30 seconds and could have this major transformation in you. Like the biggest transformations I had when I actually talked with other human beings about the problems, about the things they face, when I was not like, uh, yeah, just closing my eyes, seeing actually someone suffering, which we do this every single day. We pass people, we're not talking with our colleagues, we're not really actually communicating with each other enough. And then we say, like, say, when I gonna go through uh, meditation or psychedelics, then I treat myself and then I will be more human being to communicate and engage with others. But, but that darkness, in a certain sense, it's a swell connexus. And then at the same time, Maybe we should as well talk more about healing each other through each other, not only like about internal journey. But you? Yeah, I think actually uh, you might need both because uh, there's healing from the external world, and I agree with you completely. 
and we find the sort of the work that I do is on skin type, so we look at each other's eyes and we, we be okay with who we are, basically. That's extremely important. However, you also need to look within. And uh, the psychedelic allows you to do this in a way that uh, maybe will be too uncomfortable for you to, to do without. And in fact, I would say it's not a shortcut or anything. In fact, it was the, the main source of treatment for, uh, for thousands of years. Like all the shamanic traditions of every religion before they become uh, you know, very uh, dogmatic and controlled have this element of personal liberation. So it's the main tool that we just forgot, basically. And so I would say you probably need both, but I agree with you entirely. That we need to create some social glue, some social cohesion, and then we will have much less problem to begin with. Let's hear from some others. You had a comment over here? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, my name is Juliet Makapela, but I'm the African Wonder Woman. And um, thank you, David Wood, for this um, session. Um, I'm quite in fascinated with this kind of conversation. And um, one of my slogans is, um, I'm the African Wonder Woman, always wondering, and? Full of wonders. Full of wonders. So for those who've heard me speak, and the one thing is, I'm interested in a conversation, especially, and don't take my um, remark a little bit, uh, it's a little bit perhaps sensitive, but uh, I'm interested with the Western communication in terms of the world. And that has taken me to a journey of seven years. And this brings me to what we are looking into today. And one of the things that I see, um, and the reason I took that slogan for the African Wonder Woman, because it's meant to bring embrace change and bring joy and live to the maximum. That's one thing that I believe every single person in the world that needs. And I've been to so, so many seminars, and thank you for all the, th the three different perspectives. And I have questions for all of you. So the last one, um, I'll start from the back. So the first one is in terms of cannabis, right? So I took that as um, a communication whereby, in the Western perspective, they see this rise of um, cannabis has something that will help the world. But if you look at the Asian and has the, um, the uh, psych psych psychologist, your guy, 40 years, there is the kind of um, uprise of yoga coming in. So I've got a question for you. In terms of, if you relate that to what Darren was saying, BME communities, and I specifically on this occasion will classify, especially Africans, have been used or feel that they have been used as a source of, um, um, as a source of um, research. So it brings a lot of sensitivity in terms of cannabis. In the second thing, uh, so I, I, I bring that. In the case of feminism, I take it personally as a woman that you need all the kind of feminism movement to actually create change because they are all perfect. I see that, but I will comment on that another time. Um, Daryl, thank you for bringing the kind of uh, ideas behind how learning has happened. In Jamaica, people were not taught history. In Africa, in Kenya, in the 53 countries, 54 countries, we were taught the history of Africa. English perspective, they don't learn this. So I've been interested in how, especially the Caribbean kids, learned, um, uh, learned how to learn history. And finally, for yourself, I'm very interested with your theory because it, um, it brings the warmth. I believe that warmth is something that every single person, regardless of your mental health illness, love is something that everybody needs. And the one thing that I struggled personally with was um, in, in UK, if, if you go to, personally, if somebody would hug me, I would be a little bit, I need to know you a little bit. So there is politics behind that in this country. In Africa, you wake up, good morning, everybody, and it's hi, jumbo, hakuna matata. You've had this kind of slogan. Hakuna matata in Kenya means no problem. So it's very interesting. So I'm interested with one question that started me off, prejudice. And I'm so delighted to see that there is learning shaping up in this room. This is really nice because it has been a struggle, especially for Caribbeans, Africans, to actually turn around, or even other cultures. And you know what was really so special for me? When I was going home two years ago, I believe, or three years, 
I realized that being in United Kingdom had actually somehow made me have this kind of thinking that I shouldn't be allowed, I, you know, I'm better off. And I'm not. I am not. I am not. We are actually all willing to give back. And I think that the movement for psychiatrists and doctors should be about getting the true potential of every single person because you are good for him and so forth and so forth. I call it the spirit of Ubuntu. A spirit of Ubuntu means united, right? And I think that that movement, if grown through some of uh, London shaping, um, whatever, that spirit of love and care, we need to tell the world that every single person, you, I care about you, you care about me. And we are all destinies for every single person. That's a very good thought. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's say uh, you have a chance to comment in a minute. I mean, there's probably we need to discuss that in the pub in some length rather than <laughs> discuss it all here. Let's hold back these thoughts. Anybody else want to chip in? Because we're already past four o'clock. I don't want to make you sit too long. One bad aspect of life is sitting too much. You know, sitting is the new smoking, so I shouldn't keep you sitting much longer. Uh, you standing up because you've got a point? Uh, anybody else want to chip in a final thought? But my question is, what, uh, what should happen next, you know? Is it just a matter of educating? Why isn't some of this stuff uh, shouted from the rooftops? If the hypnotherapy really can have a much better effect than psychotherapy, why aren't uh, we hearing more about it? If uh, psycho psychedelics is, uh, in some cases, a better treatment, why, why are we not seeing more of it? What's holding it, what's holding it up and how can we change it? That's my question. Um, patient heal, client lost, I think, so. Patient yes. heal, client lost. So some uh, some uh, trick, some uh, psychotherapists don't really want to heal your, heal their patients quickly. Probably, yes. Pharmaco pharmacological companies as well. Yeah. Obviously, it's in the interest to keep us ill and pumping their drugs into us. So, I don't know if you guys have any other I ideas. Think, uh, I agree with you. Yes, yeah, the only one I think. <laughs> But if hypnotherapy can be so successful, why aren't there big businesses springing up to say, right, we're going to use hypnotherapy and uh, be more effective? Well, one of your Same slides, Andrew, you did have a, a suggestion that uh, there are more VCs interested in this than before. And I was wondering, is that good or is that bad? I'm not sure. Probably it can be used for good. Um, yeah, on that, I don't know, to be honest. I think uh, sometimes... Um, when, when it's the case of hypnosis or hypnotherapy, people have lots of um, worries and concern about it and because they don't fully understand it. And so in a sense, they don't even believe that it can be true. And that's, and that's actually the, the irony, which is the more you believe, the more you will be healed. That's how it works, actually. And so um, by time, so, so in a stage hypnosis, for instance, they select people well you know, to go perform because they select people who want to do it, who believe in it and who are receptive to it. Everybody is uh, receptive to, to some degree, uh, but those are people who are willing to, to, to surrender, surrender to, to someone's voice. And you will think it's a bad thing to surrender, but Islam, the, the meaning of the word Islam is surrender. And it's a tremendous peace when you are taken care of like by, uh, by someone else who's gonna suggest something to you that you're gonna adopt. It's like, and now, now you re just realize that your life is, uh, is pretty good, actually, and uh, you appreciate the things that you have, and you know you radiate love and respect, and in return you get love and respect. And now your critical mind is going, that's not possible. But you go in hypnosis where your critical mind takes a rest, and it's going to say, amazing, I love it, because your subconscious is good for it. You cannot suggest anything that's going to be bad for it. And so I don't know. I think it's just disbelief. People don't believe it. It's not even regulated in UK. I'm sorry, but uh, uh, the thing is that to trust someone, like, because a lot of other treatments is you actually, okay, going to the journey, treating yourself. Here, you asking for the person yeah. to be healthy, to decide what is good for you. How could you trust a hypnotist that he will be enough healthy, enough mm. open, enough understanding the world, and everything to actually put so the message. I mean, of course, you need good ones. That's for sure. Like, yeah, you need uh, like proper expertise on it. And um, how can you know? 
Dominic, you had a comment as well? I was going to uh, give you a reply to your question. I think if this is true, as you say, uh, why aren't businesses catering to all these therapies springing up? If it is true, in Darwinistic terms, mm. it's related to the lack of equality of a participation. Mm. Social mobility is at an all-time low, mm. so there's no kind of Kickstarter for people to you know, attain what once mm. they've cured themselves. Mm. So before we break into an informal discussion, Janina, you had a point, um, and then we'll have one minute, uh, up to one minute of final thoughts from each, each of the three of you, and then I'll say probably one minute at the end too. It's more a point rather than a question. Forgive That's me. fine. But, um, you know, we were talking about the acceptance. You've brought up hypnotherapy, for example, and you brought up the idea that you have to find the right practitioner. And it, interestingly, in the psychotherapy field, there is increasingly calls for regulation. Now, regulation sounds good when it comes to things like psychedelics because it can be a surgical of control. But there are many things that fall into the, the realm of magical voluntarism which includes a lot of psychiatry, psychotherapy, and hypnotherapy, that if you regulate it, you kill it. I mean, there was already in the NHS a big, a, a big debate going on between CBT versus psychotherapy. Now, CBT is the one that's measurable, but it actually doesn't work for a lot of people. Um, so there is this danger about over-regulating, thinking about how to make it popular, and the only way that can happen is through some kind of controls that kill the effectiveness of the treatment, if you like, and accessibility. Um, so I think that's an important balancing act that needs to be, you know, people need to be aware of. So final comments, uh, Darren, then Anya, then uh, Matthew, and by all means comment on some of the points that Juliet or others raised in that very interesting exchanges earlier. Um, I didn't know I was going to be put on the spot for one minute, but I will just say this again. Thanks for first and foremost for the ability to have a platform to share what I feel I'm here to share. Um, and as far as the role in the future, um, there's a saying that I learned from rap music, and that was getting where you fit in. And I believe everybody has a role, has a place, and that might be from the clinical end all the way down to the grassroots. But I think the movement on moving this forward will just come in, and everybody standing on their square, knowing where they stand. And feeling comfortable, so whether it's you're just somebody who's taken mushrooms in the past, feel free, if you're the doctor, you can, you can speak up on it, and I just think that's how this will move forward, so I'm just speaking on this from my perspective and doing it from you know, the way that I see People it. can find out more about your ideas at ancientfutures.org, is that Yeah, right? so it's probably better yet, I'm switching from ancient future, I'm going independent, so you can find me on social media, Darren, Darren LeBaron on social media, or Darren Springer, and my website should be up in the next two weeks, so you can so find me on Darren add it to the notes in due course. Yeah. Darren LeBaron. Yeah. Anya, maybe you can tell people also about the work of the Psychedelic Society in case they've been inspired by some of the things you've said. Oh yes, so um, we do a few things on the society. First thing is campaigning uh, for rescheduling legalization. Second thing is uh, events for community in London. So it's meditation, yoga events, integration, psychedelic integration circles. This event every day, sometimes twice a so day. So you're doing not just psychedelics, you're doing meditation and yoga. Yes, and because those are all practices that uh, complement the psychedelic experience, and that's what I wanted to say as a final thought. Psychedelics are a tool, and then everything that Matthew said, those are other tools. Those together, that's the success. But psychedelics on their own are not going to work, definitely not. And the first thing that psychedelic, psychedelic society does is we do experience retreats as well in the Netherlands. And they are uh, legal there, uh, obviously. And it's a group of 12 people, but it's really just to have psychedelic experience in safe and legal setting. And Psychedelic Society of the Netherlands, which we're affiliated with, they're running retreats which are more therapeutic and growth oriented. Um, and yes, again, as Matthew said about trauma and, uh, and, and body, this book from the guy that actually you quoted there, I really recommend everyone to read this. It's a beautiful book that tells you about what you can do with your body to heal the trauma. So I think this, body and psychedelics together, that's the success. Fantastic. Matthew, final recommendations? Um, yeah, actually it's a misconception that uh, in lots of spiritual movement that to get better, you need to go to the light and so on. And like in Buddhist church, it, it cannot be further away from the truth. In fact, if you look at the meta-narrative of all stories, it's pretty much always the same thing. 
In the cave that you fear lies the treasure that you seek. So in the place where you least want to look lies the thing which you most want to find. And if you want to get free from fear, you just have to face them. There's no, short, there's no shortcut, actually. You say psychedelics has a shortcut? Actually not. <laughs> it's like you have to take courage and go for it. But um, some uh, medicine, I, and I particularly recommend ayahuasca. Uh, if you can try ayahuasca, because it, it, it's a whole uh, cocktail, I suppose, but you need to do it accompanied. You know, with like, people who really know what they're doing, they've done it for, for uh, years and so on. And I, I know some contacts who can facilitate that. But, um, and, and I've seen tr radical transformation in those tools, but it's not easy. It's, uh, you, have to, you will have to face yourself and, and it, it will be hard. But eventually, it's the process towards recovery. You know? And uh, yeah, so that's it for me. I hope uh, you all have a wonderful and fulfilling life and be brave. Yeah. I really like the mental health 2.0. I liked even more the mental health 3.0, and I wish we can uh, spend more time on that. End. And I particularly like the idea of moving from uh, the basic levels of the unconscious, the subconscious, and the conscious to the hyperconscious, the genie. And I feel that if more people can glimpse that and experience that more readily, then it will change society even more quickly. Uh, as you said, when people suddenly realise there's evidence and their own experience, there's quite quickly can change around and I feel we can get more people up at that level. I might call it not just the genie level, the transhuman level. And uh, that leads me to one final comment that you may have seen those of you who are in the meeting room before we started. The London Futurist is planning an event, uh, quite a big event, but we're going to dig into topics a bit longer. This is a two hour long meeting, two hours and a little bit. Uh, we're going to have a two-day meeting on the 6th and 7th of July when we're going to look at more about all aspects of this transhuman potential which we've got. Transhumanism in the future of health, including mental health. Transhumanism in the future of education, how education should be changed to teach people more about these wide range of things. Transhumanism in the future of intelligence, including artificial intelligence. And transhumanism in the future of politics, because a lot of what's holding us up is the wrong kinds of legislation. I'm completely with Janina that the wrong kind of legislation can slow down very important innovations. I do think that some things do need to be innovate, uh, regulated, and uh, Matthew was surely right to say, here are some drugs which are so dangerous that, although they might give people a, a rush to start off with, they are bad news indeed. So what is that right angle? And we're trying to cover all of that in the two-day event called Transvision 2019. It's actually part of a series of conferences that goes back to 1998, being held around the world there was one in London in the long off days of the year 2000. Well, we're going to do one in uh, here in Buckbeck probably on the 6th and 7th of July. Find out more about that online. We are now going to break up. Those who need to go can go. So if you want to continue some of the kind of the deeper aspects of some of the discussion, are welcome to join us in a pub where you can drink non-alcoholic drinks or alcoholic drinks, <laughs> tea or other substances that you bring by yourself but don't show the staff perhaps. Uh, we can get together there. It's a short walk from here. It's in the Royal National Hotel. And uh, But if you need to rush off for other things, then we understand too. Thanks so much for your patience and thanks again to wonderful three speakers.